If you fall into a black hole, you'll see the whole future of the universe play out, right? Wrong. It's a common myth though because of the surprising fact that a person falling in will appear frozen for eternity as they approach the black hole's event horizon, you know, the point of no return. To see why both statements can be true at the same time, I'm going to teach you to interpret a Penrose diagram. These diagrams were first employed by Roger Penrose and Brandon Carter, and they're super handy in visualizing the shape of curved spacetime and what light does in it. Right, so here's the diagram for flat spacetime, the kind of spacetime with no gravity. You should think of each point inside the diamond as a spacetime event, not just a location in space, but also a moment in time. So each point in the diagram is an event. Next, you can think of time as roughly running up the diagram. It's not exactly up, but the far future is near the top point of the diamond, and the distant past is near the bottom point of the diamond. Left and right in the diamond correspond to moving toward and away from some arbitrary reference point, so as you get further right, you get farther and farther away from that reference point, with the rightmost point of the diagram corresponding to being infinitely far away from that reference point. Now, in this diagram, we're ignoring angular directions. It's only two-dimensional, so we can only keep track of time running up and down, and inward and outward running left and right, but that's enough for us. Next, these diagrams are constructed so that the path an outward pointing light beam travels along is always depicted by a line going up and to the right at a 45 degree angle. Similarly, an inward pointing light beam travels up and to the left at a 45 degree angle. So if you turn on a flashlight at some event in the spacetime, light will go inward and outward, creating a cone of light emanating from that event called the future light cone. And because light is the fastest thing around, nothing you can do can ever escape that light cone, as that would mean covering distance in less time than light does. And that means that everything with mass must stay within that light cone. Essentially, things with mass must always trace out a path through spacetime with an angle of less than 45 degrees relative to the vertical. Right, so let's go back to the black holes. Here's the Penrose diagram for a non-rotating black hole in an otherwise empty and boring universe. All the rules still apply. Light moves at 45 degrees, things with mass follow vertical paths with angles less than 45 degrees. And just like before, right means away from the black hole and left means towards it. Now the event horizon is that 45 degree line in the upper left hand side, so it makes sense that if you're inside the black hole region, you can't get out because you can't travel faster than light, and light travels at 45 degrees. On the other hand, if you're an astronaut falling in from the outside, you'll travel, say, vertically on this diagram until you cross the event horizon. Now imagine that you're carrying a light bulb as you're falling in. Once you get to the event horizon, the outward going light will reach the far future. So someone billions of years in the future at that top point will still see light coming from your light bulb. Essentially, you've been frozen in time there. But what can you see? Well, by the time you hit the singularity, that wiggly horizontal line at the top, the things you could in principle see are all of those spacetime events that could send a light beam to you. Put another way, all of those events contained in your past light cone, the upside down cone made by 45 degree lines ending at you, are visible to you. And thought of this way, there's plenty of stuff that could happen in the upper right of the diagram that you could never see. It's too far away and you hit the singularity before it has time to get to you. So that's that, myth debunked, and now you can read Penrose diagrams.